Erev Shabbos, Shabbos Shira, Parshas B'Shalach. Usually I tell over some idea. I'm going to do the same thing tonight, but I want to tell you over something that I said over. An experience that I had today. I give a shmooze every Thursday in Yeshiva and called all the guys down. Got everybody gathered together for the shmooze. Did something a little dramatic. I asked everybody to put their phones <coughs> into a box. And then I told them, sit straight, pay attention. It's going to be a short schmooze. And I told them the following idea. It says that the Jewish people walked in the middle of the raging sea on dry land. And that was the incredible miracle. That here it was, a sea a moment ago, and now it was just dry land that we were walking through. Not muddy, not quagmire. Yabasha, it's dry land. We were in this, we were in the middle of this raging sea, and then miracle upon miracles, now we're in the Yabasha. A few psukim later, the Torah says the same thing. That we were walking on dry land in the middle of the raging sea. Now the point of the Torah is to accentuate the miracle, to accentuate the nace. It's clear. But if you're accentuating the nace, then why was it necessary to say in the one place to call it that you were in the middle of the sea on dry land and in the other place on dry land in the middle of the sea? It's really the same sentiment. It could have easily been expressed the same way in both places. Either say in both places, or but why the switch? Because I think the Torah is telling us something incredibly dramatic. The Ramban says that we must look at big miracles. We have to study, learn, daven about the incredible big miracles that God did, the splitting of the sea, the falling of the mun the plagues in Egypt. All of those are miracles that turned the world upside down. They were miracles that went against Teva. And we need to learn them, we need to study them, we need to become familiar with them. We need to be wowed and impressed by them. Because if you become melumed benisim, if you become learned in miracles, if you become learned in the big miracles, sensitive to the big miracles, to the Yad Hashem, to the hand of God, <clears throat> in these huge moments, then you'll be able to use that to illuminate and to see and to understand every one of the smaller moments in your life. Every one of those what seem to be regular occurrences, like waking up in the morning, like having a child, like celebrating a wedding, like making a parnasa. All of those things, things seem so mundane. Baking bread, but they're, they're incredible miracles. They're nisim and he flows. But you'll only become sensitive to the miraculous in the mundane if you can be sensitive to the miraculous in the miraculous. If your miracle lights are on, if your miracle sights are set, then you'll be able to train that into every nook and cranny and to be able to see that in every twist and turn in your life. And that's what the Torah is expressing. When you're you're in the middle of the sea and you recognize that you're walking on Yabasha, you feel the miracle. Then when you're Yabasha, when you're standing on dry land, you're in the middle of your regular life, you will feel as if you're Yam, as if you're in the middle of the miraculous, in the middle of the incredible. And that, my friends, is the place that we need to get ourselves to. To become illumined beneath him, to become learned in the miracles so that we can see them. We can see the hand of God in our mundane, small things that are happening in our lives. Not to become distracted. <clears throat> Not to lose sight and to lose focus. And to become unaware of our surroundings and what's, what's there. Then I said to my boys, I said, what I really would love 
is for each one of you to stand up and put yourself back 3,500 years. Transport backwards. Put yourself back at the exodus of Egypt. Stand there at the foot of the sea and describe to me what happened, what you experienced, what you went through. Use all the Ma'amari Chazal that you know. Use all the Psukim that you know. Use all the Midrashim that you know. Use everything you've been taught throughout your entire career in Jewish day school. I said, I would really love to do that. But I can't. Because I don't want to call all of you liars. You see, let me describe to you what your experience really would have been like had you been at Kriya Samsuf. The Egyptians would have been standing behind you and they would have been threatening. And there were those amongst you that would have been frightened and scared. But most of you wouldn't have noticed because you'd be watching your screen checking the scores in your fantasy football. See how much money you want. And then as you, Moshe Rabbeinu lifts up his stick and the sea splits in front of you. You're too busy watching a TikTok or answering a text. And as you walk through the sea, just following along everybody else, there was clear water on either side of you that people were dipping into and drinking. And there were fruits in there so that you could eat something so that, that you wouldn't, you, 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 would, you would be comforted as you walked through. But you wouldn't have noticed that because you were watching a movie on Netflix. And then you got through the other side and there's Baisha Benu starting to sing Oz Yashir Moshe Ashir Hashem Ki Ga'ai Ga'ah There is joy in singing but you probably wouldn't have heard that because you had those white things coming out of your ears wirelessly listening to some music being played on your phone In the middle while I was, leave that part out. This is what we experience. My friends, we could say that these are 19, 18, 19, 20 year old boys. You walk around the world, you see adults doing the same thing. Every free second the phone comes out. You're talking to somebody say, wait, I just have to answer this email. You see somebody you haven't seen in such a long time. And it's a threesome. It's you and them and whoever else they're talking to on, on the phone. The distractions are incredible. We could miss those big miracles. So we become blinded to the small ones because we're distracted in our worlds and we're distracted in our lives. Look, during davening, people take their phones out in the middle of davening, you're talking to God. People in the middle of learning, they take out their phones. In the middle of experiences of life, take out your phone. You want to feel when you're biabasha on the dry land. You want to feel like you, the hand of God, the miraculous, the b'say chayam. Then you got to open your eyes to the b'say chayam. You got to live life not behind the curtain, not behind the veil. You got to live life not, not disconnected. If we could feel the B'Sai 
and recognize that we're on your basha. Look at how God is taking care of us. Because I'm aware and I'm clued in, I'm ticked in. To, I'm sensitive to everything that's going on around me. Then taka ben biyabasha when I'm on the dry land, I'll be able to feel like I'm b'seichiyam. I'm in the embrace of God. But it's all at us. It's literally in our hands. Whether we live life extremely distracted or whether we live life with the ability to feel and to be sensitive to and to be buzzed by and impressed by all the incredible things that go on around us. Maybe the Shabbos Shiro, the Shabbos of song, Maybe we need to figure out a way to make it into our song. Figure out a way to make it that's an expression of what's going on inside of us. And the only way to do that is to feel, experience, touch, be aware, be present, be in the moment. And that's the godless, the greatness of the Shabbos. It's a reminder that if we want we want to tell the story. Kilu, we were there. Then we have to be there. You should have a beautiful, amazing, sensitive feeling. Incredible Shabbos. And that by the time Shabbos is over, we should be so aware of what's going on around us. That the shira, the song, just wells up inside of us. And just pours out into the world. Have a beautiful Shabbos, everyone.